Applied behavior analysis is one of the best approaches for modifying behavior. And what is applied behavior analysis, you ask? Well, boy, howdy, do I have the video for you because I'm Dr. Igor Yurichevich and this is Behavior Modification. Let's go. All right, so in this video, we're gonna introduce the idea of what is applied behavior analysis, specifically as it pertains to behavior modification. So we are going to head to Cooper, Heron, and Heward, and uh, they said that applied behavior analysis is the science in which tactics derived from the principles of behavior are applied systematically to improve socially significant behavior, and experimentation is used to identify the variables responsible for behavior change. So that is what we're going to be looking at today. We are going to be looking at applied behavior analysis and the the features that it has as it's applied systematically, as it's applied to socially significant behaviors, and as it uses experimentation to identify the variables responsible. We're basically going to take our deep dive into applied behavior analysis. So we're going to turn to a study by Donald Bayer in which he outlined the seven features of applied behavior analysis. So we are gonna take a look at these seven self-conscious guides to behavior analytic conduct. And these are the fact that applied behavior analysis is no surprise, applied, uh, no surprise, it's behavioral, uh, no surprise, it's analytic, and then maybe some surprise, it's conceptually systematic, it's technological, it's effective, and it's generalizable. So let's get going on feature number one, and that is applied. So applied behavior analysis uh, is, like it says on the tin, it is applied. So what does this actually mean? Well, what this means is that it goes out and targets socially important behaviors. So the purpose of ABA, the purpose of applied behavior analysis into it is to be applied to improve these socially significant behaviors. So what behaviors are we talking about? We're talking about things like speaking, uh, things like language. So being able to speak in our culture, in any culture, is a very socially important uh, behavior. Being able to communicate is a very socially important behavior. Uh, being able to attend school, the behaviors that you need to be successful in an academic setting are socially significant behaviors. Being able to care for yourself, being able to uh, prepare your own food, uh, maintain a hygienic environment. These are socially important behaviors. Uh, while we're on the idea of hygiene, personal hygiene is a socially significant behavior. And then there's also leisure activities, which are socially significant behaviors. So being able to interact with others and being able to even just play uh, those are all very socially important behaviors. So that is what applied behavior analysis is applied to. So it's applied, it's applied to behavior, but very importantly, it's applied to socially significant behaviors. All right, the next feature that we're going to take a look at is that applied behavior analysis is behavioral. And what this means is that the target of applied behavior analysis is always behavior not other constructs that are important to the human experience, but are just fall outside of applied behavior analysis. So for example, writing is a behavior and you can apply the techniques in applied behavior analysis to modify your writing behavior. However, if you do that, we are focusing on the behavior of writing and you can focus on many different aspects of that behavior. You can focus on the duration of the behavior. How long do you write? You can focus on the neatness of the behavior. How, how neat is your penmanship? You can focus on the quality of the behavior. How good is your writing? But we focus on that chosen behavior. That chosen behavior is the basic unit. And what we don't focus on are other things that are important to the human experience. Things such as how do you feel? Things such as your attitude about behavior. Uh, behaviors that are not measurable fall outside of the uh, scope of behavior analysis. So the behavior must be measurable. How long have you spent uh, writing? What is the quality of your writing? Um, what is the neatness of your writing? These are all things that can be measured. 
And then lastly, is that we understand that the behavior change uh, can cause other people's behavior to change as well. So your duration of writing might increase. We might go through a procedure where we increase how often and how long you spend uh, you spend writing per day. And that might change the way other people interact with you. For, so for example, other people might turn to you and ask you to write even more, right? They know that you're a good writer, so now they want you to write something for them. So we understand that we are changing behavior, not just for the individual who is the target of the applied behavior analysis, but also for the individuals that they interact with as well. But the unit is always the chosen behavior, always that target behavior. All right, the next thing that uh, we are gonna look at, this is a uh, twofer right here. And uh, Bayer pointed out that applied behavior analysis is both analytic, the analysis part of applied behavior analysis, and it's conceptual. So let's start off with the analytic part first. What that means is that applied behavior analysis sets up a functional relationship between the ABA procedure and the change in behavior. So we set up a relationship and we have techniques, we'll get into those in later videos. We have techniques that show that these uh, tactics do influence the behavior, but we set up that relation. We establish the fact that this tactic that we use to modify behavior is actually modifying this behavior over here. And that's the analytic part. So we're not hoping that what we did was what led to a change in behavior. We're not inferring that what we did was what led to a change in behavior. We are actually setting up situations where we can test whether or not what we did, the ABA tactic that we applied, actually changed the behavior. And that is the analytic part, setting up that functional relation. So the next part about that is that it's also conceptual. And what that means is that applied behavior analysis is built upon a foundation of foundational theories, foundational concepts, uh, foundational research that we build all of these tactics on. So these aren't just little magic tricks or parlor tricks or, or uh, isolated procedures. These procedures that we're gonna go through in this video series, these procedures are all procedures that have been built up upon foundational understanding, foundational concepts, and conceptually systematic, uh, that everything in applied behavior analysis is built upon. So it's not just something that you're pulling out of thin air. It's not just based on an intuition. It's based on research. It's based on theories. It is conceptually systematic. All right, the next feature that Bayer points out is that applied behavior analysis is technological. Now, that is a very specific meaning of the word technological. So while we do use a lot of technology in applied behavior analysis, uh, for example, we use a lot of uh, specially designed uh, programs and apps in order to track behavior. What we mean by technological is a very specific meaning. And what that is, is that your procedure can be repeated. Applied behavior analysis can be repeated. So much like a photocopier, if you know how to use it, you can make copy after copy after copy. In applied behavior analysis, once you know how to use it, it is defined well enough. The procedures are defined clearly enough that anybody can take a look at those procedures and implement those procedures and get the same results. That's what we mean by technological. So it's not something that you need to have a feeling for. It's not something that is based on an intuition. It's not something that you either have or you don't have. It is something that you can learn and it is something that is defined with enough precision and in enough steps that it is able to be replicated over and over again. So if you know the steps, if you know the procedure, you can do applied behavior analysis. That's what we mean here by technological. All right, the next feature that we are going to uh, mention is that applied behavior analysis is effective. Now, what we mean by effective is that applied behavior analysis modifies behavior in a way that is meaningful. It modifies behavior in a way that has impact. So what this means is that if you're modifying speaking behavior because you need to give presentations to a group, Applied behavior analysis is effective in the sense that it will modify your behavior till you get to that point, till you get to that effective level where you can now talk in front of a group. So we're not talking about small little changes, right? We're not talking about little changes in your speaking ability. We're not talking about little changes in how well you can present to an audience. What we're talking about is we're talking about effective changes. Now those effective changes, 
might be uh, might be based on a lot of small little changes. And we'll talk about that as we go through this video series. However, the end goal of applied behavior analysis is not just to change behavior, it's to change it in an effective amount so that you can then go out and do that particular behavior in an effective way. All right, the last feature of applied behavior analysis that Bayer has brought to our attention is that it is generalizable. It has generality. And what we mean by that is when you target a behavior, when you change a behavior using applied behavior analysis, that behavior modification will occur in the learning setting. So wherever it is that you are changing that behavior, of course, that behavior is going to change there, but it's also going to be generalizable. So if you learn speaking behavior, public speaking behavior, so that you can learn how to speak more effectively in public, you are going to be able to do that in the learning environment. However, you are also going to see that that behavior generalizes to other environments. So you might learn how to uh, speak at a presentation, but that is also going to generalize to your ability to order coffee at a coffee shop. And those behaviors are also going to generalize to your personal interactions with your friends. So it's not just limited to the situation that was trained. It's not just limited to the environment that it was trained in. Applied behavior analysis changes behavior in a way that is generalizable so that you can take those things that you learned in one setting and apply them to the rest of your life. All right, so that was our introduction to applied behavior analysis, uh, specifically our look at the seven features of applied behavior analysis. So we went over uh, today the feature of it is applied. So we apply this to socially significant behaviors. It is behavioral. The goal of applied behavior analysis is to change a target behavior and not other features of the human experience. It is analytic and conceptually systematic. So we establish relations to make sure that the cause and effect links are there between what we do and the behavior that we change. We build these things up on foundational theories. They're not just pulled out of thin air. It is technological, meaning that anybody can learn it, which is great news uh, because you yourself will be able to apply these um, applied behavioral analysis tactics. It is uh, effective. We make big changes that make big changes in a person's life. And it is, uh, what's that last one? It's generalizable. It's not just limited to the learning environment. It is generalizable to other behaviors as well. So that's it for today's video. So next time we are going to take a look at the promise and potential of applied behavior analysis. So what exactly is possible with applied behavior analysis and where might it go in the future? Uh, but until then, my name is Dr. Igor Yurichevich. I really hope you enjoyed this video, but more importantly, I hope you get out there and you do something with it. So until next time, stay frosty and let's go modify some behavior. And uh, until I see you next time, shine on, you crazy. Ah, <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> uh, all right, we're going to go with the other one. Okay, here we go.